Hi there and welcome back to Photoshop Elements for Bloggers. I'm Jenny and in this lesson you'll get a walking tour of the Elements workspace. And we'll also start adding photos from the organizer for you to work on. So let's get started. Alright, I'm here in the editor and this is where the magic happens. At the top of your screen you'll see your old favorites, File and Edit. These are part of what's called in Elements the program bar. And I call this the unabridged menu for elements. You can access any function that elements will do through these menus. Although it's not usually the quickest way to do things. On your left hand side, you'll see the tools. And these are what we use to work with the photos. The tools are grouped together by what they do. So at the top, you'll see the navigation tools. And then the selection tools are right beneath that. The text tool, or I think it's actually called the type tool, is the big T here. And all around it here are the cropping tools. The lower half of the toolbar th has things that I don't use quite as often. The retouching tools are here, and there are a few more of them right down here at the bottom. And the drawing and painting tools are in this group as well. The shape tool is something that I use a lot, and it's all the way down here. And at the very bottom, you'll see the color tools. The one in front is your foreground color, and the one in the back is your background color. And you can switch these by toggling this little button right here. Um, if you ever want to just return to simple black and white, there's a cute little button right here that sets it back to the defaults black and white. The foreground color here is what's going to be the color of any text that you might type or any shapes that you might draw. And the background, as you can imagine, is the background color. And that's what Elements is going to use to fill in gaps that might come up in your image, such as if you were rotating an image and there was some extra space at the edges. By default, I believe the toolbar starts in a single column like this, but I like it to be more compact so I can see what I'm looking for more easily. So I'm going to change that. If you go up to the top, you'll see this little line, and this is a handle that you can drag. I'm just going to click it and drag it out into the workspace. And then you'll see that this little button here at the top right appears that has little arrows. If you click that one time, then the menu flies up and it's organized in more of a compact fashion. So I'm going to grab that bar here and just move it back over to the left hand side. And as I'm moving it over, you'll see a, a thin blue line up here. I don't know if you can see it at the left hand side. And when that blue line pops out, that means that it wants to dock it. So then I'll let it go and here it appears back on the left hand side again. You'll notice that when you hover over a tool a little label will pop up. And that's handy for telling you what the tool is if you're not already familiar with it. Next to that label you'll see a little letter in parentheses. And the little letter is what the shortcut for that tool is. So the zoom tool has a shortcut key of Z. And the move tool has a shortcut key of V. When you're in the middle of editing your photos and you want to switch between tools, you don't have to keep going back and forth from your workspace to the toolbar. You can simply push the shortcut key on your keyboard and it will change your cursor. So you'll see that right now the move tool is selected. There's a little indention here and that just shows that it's, it's depressed. That means that's the one that's active. And just watch the left hand side here while I switch between tools. I'll move to the one just to the right of it by pushing Z. That's the zoom tool. And you'll see at the very top, the options for the tool that you've selected are different too. Because every tool that's on the toolbar over here has a unique set of options that you can use to get more specific with what you want and to have finer tuned control. So every time our tool changes, I'm going to use, um, I'm going to change this to the H for the hand tool. And you'll see the options change just for that tool. So anytime you want to get more control over what you're doing using a specific tool, take a look at the different options that are available to you up here. I recommend to everyone that you start learning and using the shortcut keys as soon as possible because it's going to make your image editing life a lot easier and a lot faster. So now back to the toolbar. If you look really closely, you'll see that there's a little black triangle in the corner of some of these images. And that means that there are more tools that are grouped together with this one. So you just click, here's my lasso tool. So you click on it and hold that down and you'll see a flyout menu appear to the right. And these are some extra tools that are grouped together with them. They usually do the same thing, but just have one or two small differences. For a good example of this, here's the shape tool. By default, it's a rectangle. But when you hold down on it and the flyout menu comes out, you'll see that this same tool can do a number of different things. It can also be the rounded rectangle, 
or the ellipse, um, and you can use that to do a circle as well, or a polygon, and you can specify how many sides you want, the line tool, or using a custom shape. And by just unclicking on one of those, you'll be selecting the new tool. So we're going to be leaving the tools for right now, but don't worry, we'll come back and get more specific with what each one does as we start using them in this workshop. So now over to the right, you'll see your panels. At the top, under Edit, there are a few different options here. Guided is going to give you a kind of elements for dummies help you along set of options. But you'll notice that when you click on Guided, most of your tools over here on the left hand side have disappeared. This is a very restricted way of editing your photos and much of the fine tuned control that you have over your photos with elements will disappear when you go this route. But if you are really anxious to get going with this and want to hurry up and do stuff to your photos, this is a quick way to get going. It just asks you what you want to do and then it will walk you through doing it. And like I said, you do have less control over your images this way. In the middle is Quick Edit, and again, this is a very stripped down set of tools to work with. It's more like what you would see in Picasa or another free program. But for these videos, we're going to stay in full edit mode so that we have access to all the tools and can really do anything we want. Below that area at the top, you will see your panels, and we'll be working with them a lot in these videos. For right now, all you need to know is that you have lots of different panels that are available to you. And we can turn them on or off by going to the program bar and clicking window. And you can check or uncheck what you want to appear in the panels. So if you're following along with us for the workshop, go ahead and do a couple quick changes to your program so that we're all on the same page together. Here at window, you'll want to go to effects and we want to take this off. The effects panel is super cheesy, a lot of stuff that you've already seen before, we're just going to remove that. The two panels I want us to have open are layers, which should already be open, and then the undo history panel. I like to move that up to the top for mine, and I think that's just because that's the way I keep it set up in Photoshop. But if you want to rearrange your panels, click down at the top of this, the bar for, for one of the panels, and you just drag it out into your workspace, and then you can drag it back into place wherever you want it. And you'll see another blue box appear um, that will show you where you can put this. And I'm going to get off of this for a sec. There are a couple of options it's going to give you. A big blue box is going to mean it's going to dock it inside that panel. Let's see if I can get it again. Maybe I'm going too slow. There we go. That means it's going to dock it with the very same panel that it's on. It'll be another tab within that. That's not what I want to do here. I'm going to drag it up a little bit more until I see it just be a flat line. And that means it's going to pop into its own space. And you can resize these panels as well. There's a little toggle down here at the bottom. You can just click and drag to resize the panels as you see fit. I My ratio is usually about like this. If you want to see more here, you make it bigger. If you want to see less, you make it smaller. Pretty easy. And finally, down at the bottom is the project bin. If you're going to be working with multiple photos from the organizer, they'll all be shown down in the project bin. And you can show the project bin by double clicking on it. Here we go. I already had it open. And you'll see that it'll pop up there. You can use the project bin to switch between your photos easily and get a thumbnail view of all the photos you're working on. And when you're ready to close it again, as I just did, you'll double click and then it minimizes. I keep this minimized usually because I like to have lots of space to work with in the middle here for editing my photos. All right, so now we know our way around the editor a little bit. Are you ready to start editing some photos? Let's go on to the next video where I will show how to crop and resize a photo for your blog.